Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nomad webinar brought to you by Orchard and Grove. We're excited you've joined us. I'm Dana Williams, Manager of Global Accounts at Nomad, and I'm delighted to introduce you to Joel Rennick, the man behind the code and founder of Nomad. Today, Joel will be providing you a walkthrough of version 1.1 of our Nomad open source product, which we hope makes your daily lives as Mac administrators easier. So let's get started. Joel. Thank you very much, Dana. Um, glad to have everyone with us. Um, this is our second one that we've done in the last month or two. And um, it's, it's exciting to be able to show kind of what we've done, the progress that we've made and um, get some feedback from, uh, from everybody as to uh, what they're doing with it and uh, things that they like with uh, Nomad. Uh, so without further ado, um, I present to you our Nomad 1.1 overview. Um, we have this going on today. We have another one where we'll do the same content tomorrow, and then we'll take the best of the both of them and uh, we'll post it up onto YouTube. So if you have colleagues that weren't able to make it today, um, you will certainly be able to show them uh, this uh, presentation in its entirety at a later date. All right, so as Dana mentioned, I'm Joel Rennick, um, Chief Instigator of Orchard and Grove. We're the software company behind Nomad and uh, some other products that we have coming out, uh, which we'll be talking a little bit about the end. Uh, we got enough Nomad stuff to keep us busy for a while, uh, but then we, we can't get away without mentioning some of the other cool stuff that we're working on. Um, so you'll see that before we're done. All right, Nomad, um, no more AD. Uh, this is where the name comes from. Um, we're now almost a year into the application from it being publicly available. We'll show you a little timeline a little bit. And uh, we've done quite a bit of some really, really cool stuff here over the last couple of weeks, uh, in particular with the 1.1 version. So we're very excited to talk about that and uh, do some demonstrations. Uh, it's probably going to be a bigger chunk of uh, the, uh, the webcast today than in previous parts as we go through some of the specifics of what it does. Uh, I'll show you a little bit about troubleshooting and uh, how the application works. So just in case any of you are not current Nomad users or joining us in the middle of things, we always like to go back and talk about in the beginning when there was Active Directory and Active Directory came out and we had a lot of Macs and what we we're gonna do with the Macs, well, starting about 10 years ago, actually a little bit more, right around the 10.3 timeframe, uh, everybody started using the Active Directory plugin to bind to Active Directory and make those Macs uh, kind of a cohesive unit with the rest of the Windows machines. This was really exciting when it came out. I was a large proponent of this many, many years ago. You may have seen me at a WWDC sessions and other things talking about it. Um, and it was a good time and a, and a great thing to have. However, as time went on, you occasionally would have machines that would lose the bind uh, that would uh, not maybe fit in. Uh, especially as users became more and more mobile, laptops became more and more uh, remote, uh, users only went back to the VPN on a rare occasion, and so things became more and more complicated. Uh, not the fault of the AD plugin by any means, just the nature of the beast and the environment that it was in. As such, we started looking at what does Active Directory really get you? As, as a user, what are the pieces that are involved and then how can we replicate this in other fashions? Um, and primarily when you look at Active Directory, it's two major components. Uh, that's LDAP, so Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. Uh, that's for all of the user information. And then it's Kerberos for all of the passwords and for the single sign-on. So the good thing is, is that both of these uh, are built into Mac OS X uh, for, with, uh, with some open source projects, Open LDAP and then Heimdall Kerberos to be exact. Um, so those two things are easy to replicate on the Mac as long as you put the pieces together in the right way. All right. All in addition to LDAP and Kerberos, you also have lots and lots of data that are in there. Uh, Active Directory maintains um, a database of millions and millions of things in even a small organization. And for the most part, the Mac doesn't really care about a lot of that stuff. And so there's a lot of overhead involved in looking up a lot of those things when you don't necessarily need them. So that's the bunches of other things we don't need uh, once we get the password and some of the user information together. 
All right, so the big thing that a lot of people want out of Active Directory is single sign-on. And single sign-on is the ability to type in your password once. In this particular case, it's with Kerberos, and then it allows you to get to a number of different services and things. Um, in many cases, this will be websites. You can have Kerberized logins to websites, uh, file share, certificate provisioning, uh, exchange for email, although that's not as common. Uh, usually you have a password for that, uh, DFS, uh, a riff on file shares there, and then printers. So all of those are available through single sign-on in a Windows environment. And so we wanted to be able to find a way that we could give users on a Mac all of that functionality without having to have the heavyweight bind that's constantly looking up a lot of things. In particular, in a one-on-one -on -one environment where each user only has one Mac, the concept of multiple users from AD signing into that Mac is just it, it's not it's not a common thing. So why are you going to have all that overhead when you don't need it? So this brings us to login window because once you get rid of some of that overhead, then we have a lot of people asking, well, how do we log in at the login window? How do we do these other things? Um, the Active Directory plugin provides a lot of functionality here, allows anybody to sit down in front of the Mac with a valid Active Directory username and password and sign into AD. Obviously, there's goods and bads to that. Um, the good is that you get a lot of flexibility and ease of use. The bad is that you end up with a lot of other things. So in particular, the login window, when you're adding the AD plugin to it, you end up with a lot of complexity. Um, you've got a lot of moving pieces. You've got a network that has to be there, or at least should be there. Um, in, in previous versions of Mac OS, uh, it wouldn't always show the users when the password was gonna change. Um, much better in High Sierra, for, uh, by the way. Um, and so you'd end up with lots of potentially unnecessary help desk calls, lots of things that are just moving complex, the other stuff that you don't necessarily need and for not much return. All right. So, um, the other thing with login window is that in a single user system, when you're commonly off the network, um, do you really need all those, uh, AD users to be able to sign in? Do you need anybody in your organization to sit down in front of that Mac? No, uh, probably not. And in fact, you don't want that to happen. Um, so with this, uh, again, you get complexity with the AD plugin. And there's a lot of other things that maybe you don't need on the Mac. Back in the day, it was interesting to be able to have any group in your Active Directory environment uh, be available on the Mac. And there are some really cool things that you could do with that. Anymore, with file shares becoming less and less common, um, these kinds of ideas of security groups being exposed to the Mac just, just don't make sense anymore. So if you could take away all this and not have to worry about it at the login window, ideally your users become happier, your help desk calls go down, uh, and everybody's life becomes a little bit easier. So to that end, you know, we have a lot of people that ask about this, and so we're talking more and more about this. Um, we kind of see three different phases or at least groupings of users that are using Nomad. And from our back of the napkin math, we believe that it's fairly evenly divided between these three sets. So on the, on the far left, you've got users that are binding to Active Directory and using mobile accounts. So kind of the standard um, setup that you would have just out of the box with AD and the AD plugin. Uh, we have, a, like I said, about a third of our uh, user base using this. And for the most part, uh, uh, Nomad works well, uh, is able to show users when their passwords are going to expire and it just provides a handy little uh, menu item for changing things and stuff like that. Uh, so Nomad can be very effective in this case uh, and can help kind of smooth some of the transition for your users. We have about a third of our accounts that are kind of in this middle part uh, in the number two section there where they are thinking about maybe moving to an unbound situation. So they keep the machine bound and that way you still have the machine object in Active Directory. You can still use profiles to get things like certificates and stuff like that. Uh, however, they then move to a local account. So instead of using an Active Directory user object to create the account as a mobile account, they instead just have a standard Mac OS local account. Uh, maybe it has the same name as their AD uh, user, maybe not, uh, doesn't really matter. And then they use Nomad to manage the single sign on, the password and everything else for that local account. And then we have about a third of our user base is in this third category where the machines themselves are unbound uh, and they're using a local account. So this is much more of the uh, consumer model 
Uh, your system has no directory services connected to it. You have one user typically, although you could have more. Um, and that user is the local administrator. They sign into that machine with a local username and password. And then as soon as they get into that system, uh, the finder comes up and then Nomad launches as well and helps them through any sort of interaction with Active Directory and the rest. Um, our goal is to get more and more people to the third position, but that's not to say that being in spot one or spot two is either a bad thing or something you should actively move away from. Uh, in particular, if you have lab machines, being bound with mobile accounts may be very, very useful and exactly what you want. Uh, especially in a lab where the machines are not moving around, you may be ethernet connected to the Active Directory. Uh, works out very, very well. So just because we promote the concept of that third uh, setting there with being an unbound system with local accounts, that by no means suggests that Nomad isn't viable in the first two or that that's a very useful or functional place to be for those others. So again, while we're excited about allowing people to have more flexibility with Active Directory in the Mac, uh, it's not specifically designed to get rid of Active Directory in any sort of sense. Uh, we fully understand and agree that Active Directory will be there in the back end for quite some time. All right, if you do move to that third space, the one all the way on the right, that's where we call casual binding. Um, and again, this is the concept of local accounts. So you don't have any mobile accounts, you don't have mobile home folders, anything like that. Um, you've got one machine for one user typically, uh, and then you use Nomad for single sign-on. Uh, there's no persistent directory services connection, so user comes and goes as they please. And then Nomad's got some awareness of being on or off the LAN uh, so that users can get just the resources that they need when they need them. All right, so that brings us to Nomad. Um, what can Nomad do for you in these situations? Well, ideally our goal is to give you everything you like about AD, but without the bind. So what are the functionalities that we can bring? Things like getting certificates from a Windows CA, uh, password synchronization, uh, those kinds of things were table stakes. We've now grown significantly beyond that into uh, what we like to be uh, kind of uh, very focused as an admin tool for a variety of different functions. Uh, we now have a lot of script triggers that you can use. Uh, we've got ways of kind of correcting things where maybe they go wrong otherwise. So all of that is now a nomad. Uh, it's become a much larger project than we had originally envisioned, uh, but that's a good thing. It's made us think a lot about directory services as we've gone forward. And uh, it's, it's been fun, been fun and exciting to kind of rethink how some of this can work. Uh, and then of course, the bottom item there, simple and customizable. We've uh, constantly strive very hard to ensure that Nomad is very simple and easy to use for both the administrator and for uh, any, administ or any users that might be using it as well. And we have a handy little chart here since we probably get this asked on the Slack about once a week. Uh, can Nomad be used while bound? Uh, yes, it, it very much can. Can Nomad be used while not bound? Yes, it, it very much can. So handy little chart for you to keep in mind if you're having those questions. Um, and the functionality between the two cases is very, very similar. Uh, the UI perspective is the same. Uh, users can change passwords through the Nomad menu item if they're bound or unbound. Um, both are very, very functional and both provide ideally a better environment for your users, just kind of help smooth out some of the bumps with that. So uh, we like to have a little fun with this with our little chart. Hopefully you should be able to keep that uh, in mind as you go forward but both cases are perfectly acceptable to use with Nomad. Um, we also like to remind people of the kind of process that Nomad goes through. Uh, we're gonna show you this in a little bit as we kind of do a little bit of, uh, show you what to do for troubleshooting or just get a better understanding of what Nomad's doing under the covers. Um, we use a very standard methods to find out what the Active Directory domain is and uh, where things are going. So that's you know the normal looking up of SRV records, uh, we look for local Kerberos tickets. Uh, if we have both, the SRV records tells us we're on the AD domain. The Kerberos tickets tells us we're authenticated. Then we'll look up the user via LDAP, get the user information, uh, and then we do a number of things from there. Compute password expiration, find the groups, lots of stuff there. And to see it a little bit more graphically, here's kind of the uh, major players there, DNS, Kerberos, and LDAP. Um, Nomad kind of sits in the middle. 
again, does the SRV lookups, you can replicate this using the dig command, dig dash T SRV, and then the name of your uh, domain, underscore LDAP dot underscore TCP dot domain. Um, if it can find the DNS records for your domain, we assume we can contact AD. If that's the case, then we do what's called an LDAP ping. We look up the site that you're supposed to be in, find the right domain controllers for that. We then do a Kerberos K init if we've got a username and password. That goes against a Kerberos um, a key distribution center, which is also, in most cases, an Active Directory domain controller. If we get a Kerberos ticket back, then we do the LDAP search there on the right, and that LDAP search goes against LDAP, finds our user information, and goes from there. So a lot of cool stuff there. Again, very standard way of, of doing all this. Uh, you can see it happen under the covers when you run Nomad. Um, very simple stuff. Um, another question we often get is when Nomad updates itself. Uh, obviously it updates itself when it launches. That's one of the reasons why uh, you may see some stuff going on under the covers when you launch Nomad. Uh, every time the network changes, you'll actually get uh, Nomad relooks at everything, wants to make sure that the domain controllers are correct for the, the location that it's in. Um, and then every 15 minutes, uh, we found that to be a nice balance between not being too chatty with the network but still being able to get the users the information and kind of the uh, immediacy that they're looking for. So every 15 minutes, uh, Nomad will requery everything, uh, make sure things hasn't changed. This is also how, if you're using the UPC alerts, the unannounced password change alerts, uh, this is why within 15 minutes, we know that your password was changed somewhere else because Nomad's running every 15 minutes to do that. And then we get a little bit sneaky, and every time you click the menu, we do a background refresh. Um, so if you do think that something's a little bit off, and maybe you were expecting the, um, for example, countdown time for the uh, password expiration to be changed, uh, all you have to do is click the menu, uh, give it a second as it checks everything again, and then it'll show you whether your, uh, your new password expiration times or whatever else. So these are the times that Nomad checks. Um, you can also manually force it to do an update. Uh, we've got an article, it should be in the help section, about using the URLs with Nomad. Uh, Nomad is Apple event aware, so you could use a Nomad colon slash slash update. Uh, so if you're calling Nomad from a script, you can easily use that from shell, bash, uh, whatever you're using. And that will cause Nomad to do an update uh, check uh, immediately uh, there. All of the preferences were up to about 85 or 90 of them. Um, they cover a lot of things. You can hide, remove menus. You can change most of the text within the environment, uh, change the icons in the menu bar, a whole bunch of preferences that are available there. Please go to our help section and take a look. Um, the most common issues we get with Nomad are configuration issues. Uh, that stem from either people too aggressively going after different preferences or not aggressively enough going after different preferences. So just keep in mind, there's a lot to choose from. Um, some of them are a little more trickier than maybe they first appear. So make sure uh, that you test uh, as you go through that or talk to us as this is a big thing that we do for uh, any of our accounts that have support contracts is working through the preferences and make sure all of that is working out well. Um, we do have keychain support. Um, just as you would expect, uh, we can store the username and password in Nomad, uh, keep the keychain in there, and then the user never has to enter in their AD password, and we'll get Kerberos tickets. In some cases, that means that we have organizations that are using Nomad in this fashion, and users may go 90 days, uh, or whatever their password cycle time is, between actually typing in their Active Directory password. Um, and the keychain makes that very easy, and then everything gets sorted away for them. Uh, new to 1.1, which we'll talk about in a little bit, is the idea for synchronizing keychain items uh, in the keychain. So we have a little bit more information on that coming forward. Um, we have a Git software option that allows you to uh, launch uh, Jamf self-service, uh, Monkey, Managed Software Center, uh, LanRev. Um, all of those will launch whatever the self-service tools are, or you can completely customize with your own as we can take a URL, uh, app, a BombGar uh, URL, if you're familiar with BombGar, one of the screen sharing options. Um, and then we can do variable substitution within these URLs. Uh, again, this is where we like to get into the uh, kind of administrative part of the application and allow users to very easily file tickets 
uh, or otherwise get help as they're going on. So we have a few sites that are using those variable substitutions with uh, ticketing systems like ServiceNow, uh, and that way the username from AD, full name, maybe the serial number of the machine can get passed in to various options, uh, and then when the user clicks that get help option, they'll be taken to a ticket that's already kind of pre-filled out for them. So some good stuff there. All right, but without further ado, what are the new features of 1.1, the exciting things uh, that we've been working on? Um, first of all, it's Mac OS High Sierra support. Um, all previous versions of Nomad run fine on High Sierra. Um, we specifically have a High C fix option uh, for High Sierra, uh, High Sierra 10.13.0 um, has an issue where it won't change the password in AD uh, for mobile accounts. So it'll change it locally and change for file vault, change for the keychain, change for the user password, but it won't actually update AD. You then uh, sign in as that user again and uh, the Mac will helpfully synchronize the old password back on top of the user account but won't update file vault or the keychain. So you get into some funky things there. Um, so with Nomad 1.1, we have a new option that will kind of uh, fix that. Uh, we hope that this is a very kind of limited time need um, and that this gets addressed so that way you don't have to use this option uh, full time. Um, new also to 1.1, we moved everything to Xcode 9. Uh, you may have heard me uh, uh, saying some things in the Slack channel about that. Uh, it was fairly smooth, all things considered, for, for what essentially constitutes a brain transplant. Um, but there were some rough spots. Uh, so that's good, but we're excited to be on Xcode 9 because that lines us up for Swift 4. Currently, uh, Nomad is Swift 3. Uh, Swift 4 is out, uh, came with High Sierra, add some kind of cool things to do with strings and stuff like that. Uh, that uh, as a user of Nomad, you're not that excited about. As somebody who does some coding, uh, I am very excited about. So uh, we'll be moving to Swift 4 before too long. Uh, and so that's why the Xcode 9 change uh, kind of lines up a lot of things for us. So that's the High Sierra support on Nomad 1.1. Uh, biggest new feature we had was share mounting. And we're gonna show you that here shortly. Uh, and this is the ability to have a preference file of shares that are delineated by group membership. And then Nomad can auto mount those shares for users as they go through this. Um, also be able to see what's going on with that. Um, really, really cool stuff that you can do here. Plus we've got variable substitution. So that allows you to do things like swap in a username, uh, a domain name, things like that. So if you've got a kind of a funky share setup where you've got some variables that you need to know and you don't really want to write a 6,000 line shell script to kind of manage this, uh, ideally, uh, Nomad will be able to do this all for you. So there's a lot of options in it, more options than most people need. You can do things like mount the shares read only. You can mount them without the browse flag so they get kind of buried deep into the system, some things like that. So a lot of stuff to play around with. Um, and so excited to show you that in a little bit when we get to the demonstrations. We do have the keychain item sync as well. Um, here's where we use the uh, set keychain APIs. And when a user, uh, updates their password in AD, we will go through their keychain and we will update these keychain items with the new password as well. And again, here we've got variable substitution. Uh, currently it's just for the generic passwords. Uh, we're gonna be adding internet passwords shortly. That might make it into 1.1, but probably not. So probably in there in 1.1.2. So that way you can do update things for uh, web pages and things like that. Uh, the main goal of this was to be able to update Passwords like Exchange, uh, Skype for Business, other accounts like that, um, and be able to see that in there um, and kind of, sm again, smooth things out for the users, make things very simple uh, as they go through this process. Um, some other things in here, we've got 8021X profile gluing. If you use Nomad to get a certificate from AD, you can now deploy a kind of a skeleton 8021X profile that just says use a certificate, but doesn't have a username or any sort of certificate reference in the profile. Uh, Nomad will then be able to, when you get a certificate from the web CA in Active Directory, will then be able to create an identity preference that matches that certificate procured through Nomad back to that skeleton uh, 802.1x profile that you've pushed. 
Um, big deal, recursive group lookups. Uh, with great power comes great responsibility. So keep in mind that this can uh, increase some of the update times for Nomad. Uh, but we'll now go through, be able to get any nested groups for you, uh, anything else. Uh, we have a welcome window. Uh, we'll show you this here shortly. This is a, a bigger deal. Uh, it's customizable through HTML. So you can now kind of let users know what Nomad is, what it's doing up in the uh, menu bar there, um, and just generally what to do with the application. Uh, we also have improved uh, non-Active Directory support. Uh, so worked with a couple of different users, um, some with Open Directory, uh, some with just open LDAP. So both of those are now supported. Um, so you don't even have to have AD anymore with Nomad. If you just have a standard uh, Kerberos or even just an anonymous LDAP, although I'm not exactly certain what you would do with just anonymous LDAP and out Kerberos, uh, but Nomad should be able to work with that. We'll be able to look up the user records um, and kind of otherwise do what you expect Nomad to do with Active Directory. So some cool things there. Um, so we already have 1.1.1 is out in the Slack. Uh, release candidate two is out. We'll probably have one more. There's uh, one or two things that we found yesterday that we'd like to clean up before shipping that. Uh, we've got some new languages in there. Uh, Norwegian and Croatian are in there. I think this brings up our total number of languages to about nine or 10 uh, that we have. We, we added Russian in 1.1 and then we have, you know, the a lot of the standard ones that you're looking for, Spanish, German, English, French, Dutch, um, and some others already in there. Um, we had a lot of support for sites with no directory uh, or no domain controllers, excuse me. This was something that we didn't expect to see, uh, but it's apparently a lot more common than obviously we expected. So this is where Nomad looks up the Active Directory domain. Uh, and then when we find the domain, you want to look up the site that the machine is in. Uh, we had some settings for being able to set up sites and manually specifying which site you wanted to be a part of. Um, so you could kind of work around this, but then that got a little bit clunky. So now we've got full support for sites with no domain controllers in it. So what happens is we look up the globally available domain controllers. We ping one of them to find out what site we're in. If those, uh, if we don't get any sites back, we just fall back to the globally available ones. Um, so it's kind of a, I think a good compromise uh, without uh, being overly burdensome on the network, but still allowing the machines and uh, Nomad to work. Um, we have a use keychain prompt. Um, this came up with uh, some of the sites that we support. And if you're using Nomad's really great, but you kind of want to have the keychain of the AD password in the keychain. So Nomad can do some things under the cover, synchronizing passwords, things like that without bothering the user. Um, works great unless you're in a bound environment where the users are always signed in whenever they log in, and then they might not ever have an opportunity to put that password into the keychain. So now Nomad has an option to use keychain prompt that will have Nomad uh, ask the user to sign in, even if they have a Kerberos ticket, uh, as long as they're not actually uh, have a keychain item yet. So hopefully that'll clear up that. Uh, we kind of improved the welcome window. There were some uh, issues with uh, 10.11, so those should be fixed in the 1.1 release. Uh, and then uh, message UPC alert. Um, this is uh, a great place to go to for um, being able to kind of customize some of the text. Um, and yes, there's a question, so you don't have to set the site ignore feature. Ideally, yes, um, that you shouldn't have to do that anymore. And that's one of the reasons for this, so that we can be a little bit more um, responsive. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean, you know, we still wanna do some testing with this, um, but this should be able to, like I said, fall back to the globally available controllers um, instead of just dealing with uh, a site without any domain controllers. In it. All right, so without further ado, it is uh, now time for a demo. So we're gonna move over to, uh, demo system here. And we're going to show you All right, so this is a high Sierra system. Uh, it's 10.13.0, kind of right out of the box. Uh, we've got a copy of Nomad here 
this is Nomad 1.1.1. And you'll notice there's another new thing that we've started doing in the 1.1 release is that now there's four digits for the version number. So uh, major, minor, patch, and then build version. Um, we've been apparently putting out a lot of beta versions onto the Slack, and we had some sites that were getting a little confused as to which version was which. So now it should be very, very easy to manage this uh, with your MDM system, whatever else that you're doing, and be able to have, again, major, minor, patch, and then actual build version. So we'd like to keep this um, the standard way going forward so we have all that. All right, so this is a new machine. Uh, we've got a VPN that is not connected yet and wanted to show you a couple of things to do with Nomad. So first of all, we're actually gonna read in the preferences and you're gonna see that uh, the domain does not exist. So we, we don't currently have any Nomad preferences on this machine. And so what we're gonna do, the easiest, best, simplest way to do preferences is to actually create a mobile config file. Uh, so the mobile config file is what gets pushed out from an MDM server, what profile manager makes. Um, this is just a big chunk of XML. Uh, we've got a couple of sample versions of it and we've actually written an app. This is an open source project that we uh, did some changes to called property list editor that will allow you to actually edit these files and see what's going on. So in this case, you can actually see the profile that we have here. We're setting an AD domain. We're asking it to show the home. We're setting a Kerberos realm. Uh, we've got some Git help options just so you can kind of see a big old uh, chunk of text here in, in one spot. Uh, we've got keychain items. So this is uh, testing a test application that we have in here. This is what the keychain items look in a dictionary. And then the keychain items debug. Um, that's a flag that you can set that will have the passwords in the keychain get updated every time you sign in instead of having to explicitly cycle your password. Um, since Active Directory usually doesn't let you change your password more than once every 24 hours, it was really hard to do the keychain item synchronization testing without that debug flag. So again, a very simple, straightforward uh, set of XML. Um, and we've got this app that we use quite a bit to do editing with it. And we're gonna be putting some work onto that in a little bit. So now, if you just double click on this, right now you can see install Nomad Prefs. If you look at show profile, so we can sign it. So now that you know it's verified, this is uh, the certificate that's used to sign uh, Nomad in general. Um, you can go through all the settings that are in there. You can see that big, long, hairy piece of text there for the uh, Bombgar URL, you've got the Kerberos realm and some other things. So best way to do this, uh, you can upload this to your MDM. If you're using Jamf, AirWatch, something else, you can uh, just push this from there. Uh, it's also very simple to do uh, with just like you've seen here, double clicking. Uh, you can use Monkey to install these. You can use scripts to install these. So we're going to hit continue. Uh, yes, we're sure we want to do this. So it's going to install, type in our password. And now we have an installed profile here. Again, it's green because we've signed it. You can see the signature and everything else. A couple of things to keep in mind here. We've now got a full set of preferences for Nomad. Nomad will run happily without uh, any issues. However, if you do go back to the terminal still and you read in, you don't see anything here. So this is the one hitch with using uh, profiles is they don't show up with the default command. We've got an app that kind of works around that called Pref Finder, um, specifically because we had the same needs when doing troubleshooting and things like that. So now that that's here, I'm gonna show you the other way to uh, do some troubleshooting with Nomad. If you take the application and you just drag it into a terminal, you're gonna get uh, a link to the path, all right, to nomad.app. If you add a slash and contents and a slash and Mac OS and a slash and Nomad, this is the actual binary that's bundled deep into that bundle, all right? And we're gonna launch that with the dash V flag. So this is gonna have Nomad launch and it's gonna then log everything to that uh, command line session that we have there. So a couple of things. First of all, here's the new welcome window. So this helps users understand what's going on. Uh, they can see that uh, what the icons mean, 
Uh, you've got here the version number and the build. Now that we're putting the build in the end of the version, we're probably gonna remove that build piece here. Uh, if users never wanna see this again, they can click this. Uh, we've got some preference settings that you can also as an administrator set to not have this show. Don't show welcome window. Um, so that's effectively what that's doing. So users can get through here, click done. Um, and here in this terminal session, again, you can see a whole bunch of stuff that are going through here. Um, so this is live as Nomad runs. A Couple of things to keep in mind. You can have multiple copies of Nomad running at the same time. So if you have one that's launched by a launch agent, for example, but then you wanna have another one to do some troubleshooting, perfectly fine, keep Nomad running from the launch agent, go to the terminal, launch another copy of it, and you'll see two Nomad icons in the menu bar. Uh, one of them, when you press on it, will make a bunch of things happen in this window. The other one won't. Use the one that's obviously updating the window, and then you'll be able to get live uh, feedback debugging everything else. So right now we're not connected. Nomad knows it can't reach the domain controllers. So we're gonna now go over here and connect to the VPN. You can see Nomad realized what was going on, already set it up. We're now gonna be able to go here, and before we do this, we'll just show you real quick. I'll run a K list, uh, no tickets for this user. So we're now gonna go up here, and we're gonna sign in. And if we go back to Nomad, you can see the whole kind of sign-in process. Here it is looking up the domain controllers checking if you've got any certificates, uh, looking at the current LDAP server, setting the current naming context. Um, here's the LDAP ping, so we know that we're actually in the closest site. So a lot of things that are going on, as that goes on in the background, now we've been able to calculate the user's um, time until the password expires, which is 19 days. If we click on this, we get some information on this, and now the user has the ability to renew tickets, change password, uh, do all kinds of, of, of good stuff here with Active Directory. So this is kind of the basic use case of Nomad. Um, you can see again some updates and other things going on in the background. If we now go over here and we do a K list again, you can see that we've got Kerberos credentials. So that's the Kerberos ticket granting ticket. We also have a ticket for the LDAP server. So that's the domain controller that we have in there. And then if we go over here and we do a read of the preferences, you can now see all the additional preferences that have been put in. Um, so a couple of things that are useful for administrators, uh, we always grab the groups of the user. Uh, if you have Nomad set to do recursive group lookups, we will actually have all of the groups uh, in here, so not just the uh, default ones. Uh, you now know uh, when the user's password is gonna expire, uh, when it was last set, uh, what the user home directory is. For example, since we had show home, I can now go up here to this, and the home SharePoint is already set up for me. And if I click on this, it's gonna be kind of a, an old school, and I'm showing this for a reason, because we're gonna show you the new share mounting here shortly, and you can see that it's a lot better. So this is the user's home. We can see library, my home, everything else in there. So we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna deselect and unmount the home share. So that'll go away in the back. Um, and then we're gonna go back over here uh, and we're gonna quit out of Nomad. And you can do that by either quitting through the quit menu, or if you don't have it, because uh, you've hidden it away, you can just do a Command C. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, if we go back to our secret projects folder, and hide some of these things here. So we've got a Nomad shares preference file. We're gonna open that up in property list editor as well. And you're gonna see this. So this is new to 1.1. This is a separate P list that does just the file shares that you want to mount for the users in version 1.1. These can get kind of hairy because you can have a lot of things here. Uh, the largest one I've seen was about 1,200 lines and it had about 80 different share points with lots of variables and other stuff going on. Uh, this is a little bit simpler. There's two major sections. You've got the first section, which is the home mount. So this determines if we're gonna automatically mount the user's home directory from AD. So it's kind of some basic stuff because you don't have to know the SharePoint or anything else like that. And then we've got three shares down here, item zero, item one, item two. So these are the individual file shares that we're gonna be mounting. 
And, you know, just to give you a quick idea, uh, we've got a, a K-Base article on this that goes into more depth, but this is where we auto mount it or not. This is where we only mount it when we're connected to the domain. It's possible that you have a file share that's uh, Kerberized, but isn't necessarily um, available there. So uh, you then have local mount. Um, this is where you mount it locally. I think we still got to work on some stuff because I think the file mounter in High Sierra has changed some things. Uh, the name that is going to show up, in this case, DC1 files, uh, this is the actual URL that's going to be used. And if I go down here to this one, you can see an example of a URL with a short name added in there. So that's a short name variable, that less than, less than, short name, greater than, greater than. Um, that just tells Nomad to swap in the user's AD short name before actually trying to mount that share. So this is a, a real basic um, yeah, preference file here. Again, it's menu.nomad.shares, so it's a separate uh, default domain. Uh, we wanted to make sure that you could change one without messing around with the other necessarily. Um, and make it easier to kind of scope to a variety of users. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna copy that file in, and um, we'll also show you the next most common troubleshooting, especially with uh, the preference files for the shares. So we're gonna copy that in there. So now we have this, but if we do a defaults, read menu.nomad.shares, all right, so we see it in here make sure that you see it back in there because not always when you're doing kind of text editing or some other things under the covers, not always will you actually get that to stick. So the, the way to test is to make sure you can do a defaults read menu.nomad.shares. If you don't get what you're expecting, this is when you kind of bring out the hammer and do a kill all CF prefs D. So this kills the preferences system and has it reload everything back from disk. Because if you're just making changes to this as a text file, because it's, it's easy to do, um, you're able to do that and you can see those things. Um, and yes, we will may have a version of this available. I think I've posted a couple of them to the Slack, but we will have this as a demo version available on the site so that you can download this because there's no reason why you'd want to start from scratch with this. Um, so definitely use our template to get a good idea of it. And, and it may take you some time to go through this. Uh, also note, this is new to 1.1.1, that we've got the ability to have spaces in these shares. Um, just something I never thought people uh, would do, but I guess it's very easy to do in AD because when we replicated this, it was simple. So now that this is in here, I'm gonna go back up and uh, we'll relaunch uh, Nomad. Um, and again, you see everything in here. Uh, and again, you can now see Nomad go through the paces of looking up everything, going back to LDAP. Here's the LDAP ping. All right, now you can startingly see we're starting to look at a lot of known shares that are in here. So this is the share mounting actually at work. And this is an easy way of testing. You can see that we've mounted a share, which is the home share point. We've mounted a share, which is the testing volume. And we've also mounted the share, which is called DC1 files. So right here in the logs, we can see that it's happened already. Uh, if we go to the finder, you can see that we have a file server now that's been mounted. And if we go back up to here, uh, you can see that we've got a file share servers option here. Um, and with mounting file servers, sometimes it does take a little bit of time. So again, you can see that happening under the covers here. Um, again, we're looking through it since we've done a recheck of everything. Uh, we now go through there. Once they're all mounted, um, you'll be able to get through to them in the finder. And again, now we've got uh, both file servers here. They're actually the same one, but they're named twice uh, different ways. We need to clean up that uh, SharePoint with that. So you've got them here in the sidebar. Um, that's connected. And now if I go back up here to the top and I go to this file servers menu, I actually have a checkbox next to all of them that got mounted. So all three of these got mounted. And if I click on one of these, it will actually bring up in the finder that particular file share. So here you can see we've been having some fun with some certs and some other stuff in here. So that's the file sharing on 1.1. Um, can get really, really cool. Like I said, I've seen a couple of sites that have upwards of 80 different SharePoints in there with the variable substitution 
and some of the other things that are going on, you got a lot of flexibility with all that. So again, we're going to make that sample um, available so that users can be able to get that and uh, get to it very quickly. And then, you know, have some fun with this. Uh, see what's the cool things that you can do here because there are some very slick things um, and we're excited to see people do that. So in this, we're now going to move back to the slides. And that was the demo for 1.1, 1 .1, um, specifically 1.1.1, 1 .1 .1, uh, but you get the idea with the share points and everything else like that. Um, so a little bit about the version history. Uh, we had our first public beta September of 2016. So a little over a year ago is when we first started work in earnest on Nomad. Uh, official launch was December 21st of 2016. Uh, we then had uh, monthly, then kind of backed off to every other month. And now October 2nd was the launch of 1.1. Um, we're kind of planning on a 2.0 if you saw, uh, or if you're uh, on our Twitter feed. Uh, and if you're not, please, please join us, nomad.menu. Um, we're, uh, we're, I was in uh, Sweden uh, two weeks ago at Max Hissamid conference. Great conference. Thank you, Tico. Um, and we started talking about Nomad 2.0. So we're expecting that kind of in the March timeframe after the first of the year. We may pull that a little bit forward, but we want to be conservative here. So we'll have uh, obviously a couple of 1.1 releases, uh, just some little bug fixes and things like that. We've got a couple of thoughts on a 1.2. So we may hit a 1.2 by the December, January timeframe. And that hopefully tides you over until the two version comes out. A lot of changes in 2.0. Uh, the preference file name is going to change. It's going to be a menu.nomad name. Um, we'll also have a few other things that will be uh, broken. <laughs> Since it's a major version change, we, we feel safe in breaking things. So there'll be a few things like that in there. Um, so keep in mind, cool stuff. You'll see more of that as we go forward. Um, we wouldn't be here without people supporting us. Thank you very much uh, to those of you on the call that have support contracts, to those of you that don't. Um, please keep in mind, you can see them at nomad.menu. Uh, Nomad itself is under MIT license. Uh, there's a lot of community support out there. The Slack channel has over 1,100 people in it. Um, so we're extremely excited about that. Very pleased. Uh, 1,140 to be exact. Just looked. Um, so we got a lot of things going on in there. Um, so we're excited to have it open source. People wanting to learn more about Swift, wanting to do more with Active Directory, they can through that. Um, we've got support plans. Uh, biggest use of a lot of the support plans is just being able to go in and uh, have a chat about some of the custom configurations. Uh, so those are in there. Um, you know, please look at our webpage because we've got them in there. Um, and at the 2500 one, you can get branding. And then if you need other custom features and things like that, uh, we do have additional plans beyond this uh, for some of those things. Um, also, but wait, all right, so if you did see on Twitter and some of the other things, we did have some uh, uh, new announcements in Sweden, so we kind of wanted to give you just a quick overview of some of those here as well. Um, we did announce two weeks ago that we've got a framework coming. Uh, we had to kind of come up with a steampunk look for Carry the Caribou there. So that's Nomad the Framework. Uh, maybe the name's gonna change to something a little bit more marketing friendly. Um, but what this will allow you to do, it will provide what we're calling a Nomad session. And that Nomad session works with a site manager to make sure that you're working with the right domain controllers. That site manager is aware of network changes. And then the Nomad session uses uh, Kerberos and LBAP to contact uh, Active Directory. There's an expiration manager in this, which can then vend a menu full of usernames and when the passwords are gonna expire. And all of this becomes the Nomad framework, which can be dropped into, it's a Swift framework that can be dropped into any application to give you a good chunk of basic Active Directory authentication, password management, and everything else without having to know anything about it. Uh, so we'll be talking more about this at some of the upcoming um, uh, conferences that we'll be gonna be going to. So those are in there and, um, you know, ideally we can spark a, a, a lot of people being very interested in incorporating Active Directory into projects uh, on the Mac without necessarily having to rely on the AD plugin or something else to be there for it to work. So that's the framework. Um, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Nomad Pro. 
We'll have a webinar on this coming up in the next couple of weeks. You'll hear us announce that shortly. Uh, this is now released. We're very excited to have this. Uh, this is everything you kind of like about Nomad, but without Active Directory. Um, Nomad Pro right now authenticates back to Okta. We'll synchronize your password uh, from Okta to the local keychain. Uh, we do the keychain updates. We can get you Kerberos tickets. We've got a Safari extension, a Chrome extension, and a Firefox extension that all go with this. Uh, so those all come together as one product. And like I said, effectively what Nomad does, but with Okta in the back end instead of uh, Active Directory. And we're actively pursuing uh, one login, paying uh, Google Identity, uh, which is the Google G Suite kind of authentication mechanism, and then Azure AD, we expect to all roll up into here. This is not open source, uh, but we do believe it is very, very uh, inexpensively priced. Um, but it just helps us provide for the development and other things going forward. A um, couple of screenshots of what's going on here. Uh, we do support multi-factor authentication with it when you're using Nomad Pro, uh, and then a little bit of the uh, preferences that you see here. Again, kind of simple in the UI, but we end up with about 50 or 60 different things that you can do under the hood. So that's Nomad Pro. Uh, we also have chatted about this, and we're getting closer to something that we would call uh, launch, uh, which is Nomad Helper. And Nomad Helper, uh, the original goal was to kind of provide for a off-box authentication in a very secure and editable way. And so, um, Nomad Helper works with uh, HTTPS POST. We have a Red Hat or Ubuntu uh, Linux box that's part of Nomad Helper. We call it Nomad Logic Engine. Uh, it does some cleansing of the HTTPS uh, requests, validates that the user is coming from the uh, right uh, Kerberos um, uh, realm, then logs all the information as it should. It will then pull the strings on an MDM server and cause a configuration profile to come down. That's the part on the left. This, uh, the primary use case, what we wanted to start off with was elevating users from non-admin to admin. So now we have a very secure, verifiable off-box way of leveraging MDM. Uh, we started off with Jamf, but we've got other MDM solutions that we can use as well and allow this to then uh, ideally get your users into a realm where they're normally non-admin, but it's very effortless for them to elevate if they need to, or if they're elevating too often, you've got the logging on that web host, uh, and then you've got some logic in there. That's why we called it the logic engine, to do things like if they've elevated more than twice in 24 hours, maybe don't let them do it the third time, or require some sort of admin intervention to make sure that they're able to do that. So this is part of our long-term thinking in just where can we do more with directory services without needing directory services. And so in this case, we're excited to be leveraging MDM for this functionality without necessarily having to um, reinvent the wheel, create our own network protocol or anything else like that. Um, we integrated in with Nomad, so there's a checkout admin function right here uh, in the menu. This does everything under the covers. All the user knows is that about 30 seconds later, they're an admin on the machine. And then five minutes later, or whatever admin defined time, uh, they cease to become an admin. So exactly the behavior that you would like. Um, some workflows that this opens up, um, one of them is employee onboarding. Um, we are working on being able to interact with some of the HR systems so that you could instantiate a user when you onboard them in HR. That would work with asset management, work with MDM, work with DEP. And this bottom line here is the Nomad Logic Engine that then does everything to actually put that user on the machine at the login window. Uh, so Nomad Helper is one way of doing this. We're also working on completely redoing the login window. So that's no glow or the Nomad Login uh, so that we'll have that out there in a little bit as well. So ideally this makes for very happy users and very happy admins because you can uh, deploy users very simply from MDM without having to have a uh, uh, directory service involved. And then we're also looking at uh, using this to create an IT admin account. Uh, we have a lot of places that we've talked to that have a standard IT admin account across all their machines. Um, that's cool, except when it's the same account across the board, that's not so cool. 
um, and they're not changing that password. So now with Nomad Helper and the Logic Engine, we've got an easy way of scoping an account to every machine, but to not have that account have a password and to not make it an admin. And then when you need to, you can elevate on a one-by-one -one basis. Uh, you can check out passwords to that machine, things like that. Uh, and ideally, we're having a lot of fun with the YubiKeys. We're doing some smart card work because that's a whole other product that we have. If you have smart cards, come talk to us. We can make your Macs work really, really well with them. Um, so this other piece uh, allows you to do the IT admin. Um, you check out passwords as you need them. And even better, you can associate uh, a help desk user, for example, with a YubiKey and then check out that IT admin just on the one machine that you need it to that one help desk user to that one YubiKey. So we kind of put it all together there, make it really nice. So if you got any questions, uh, you can either email sales at nomad.menu or go straight to our webpage uh, at nomad.menu. We updated the page a little bit in the last couple of days. So uh, please take a look. We got some more information about Nomad Pro up there. Uh, the support contracts are up there, uh, everything else. Um, so please take a look. Uh, we also have t-shirts and other things that you can now buy in our new Nomad store. So we're excited if you want to do that as well. Uh, we do have a question about the preference editor tool. We've posted it into the Slack um, and it's on GitHub. It's a little bit weird because most of the stuff that we do is on GitLab since most of that was cloned from another open source project on GitHub. Um, we've put it on there. So that's up there. Um, we'll post it into the Slack and we'll probably make it a little more prominent from the Nomad webpage. Uh, and yes, github.com slash Mac troll uh, would be where to go. And you can find that there. You can find some really old keychain minder uh, stuff, uh, Objective-C up there as well. Uh, and yes, the session is being recorded. Uh, we're going to do another live session uh, about 28 hours from now, whatever 3 p.m. Central works out to be um, tomorrow afternoon. So about, like I said, tomorrow, but eight hours later. Um, the best one of these will then be recorded. Actually, they're both recorded, but the best one of these will then be posted to uh, YouTube because uh, we really like it. We have a lot of people looking there. If you are seeing our YouTube site, uh, please subscribe because if we get 100 subscribers, then we can change the URL to something, not just a lot of uh, random characters. So uh, if you're into the YouTube way, please find us. Uh, if you go to our webpage, there's now a YouTube link down at the bottom. You can go to our YouTube page, go there. Uh, so good stuff there. Um, so wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, Nomad.menu is the webpage. Glad to have everyone on here. Hopefully we gave you a good overview of 1.1, actually 1.1.1, um, some of the cool stuff in there. Thanks for all the questions. Uh, appreciate all your support. And uh, have a very good day, morning, afternoon, wherever it is where you are. Thank you very much.